thought I'd show you my rocket stove that I uh, built. I, um, I've seen these all over the internet and everybody's doing some variation and some design and um, I just saw one and I thought I'd give it a shot. So um, here's what I've come up with uh, for mine and I've just borrowed from other people's ideas as well. So um, I have an input um, tube that feeds in um, to the chimney part and it just has a 90 degree inside the middle of the bucket. So I just went to the hardware store and bought um, a straight tube and a 90 degree elbow. Put the 90 degree elbow in the bottom and so it just comes through this tube, takes a 90 degree and then goes up through the top. So pretty straightforward. I just split them together um, like you would any duct work on there. Um, and then inside here is a piece of a tin can that I just cut, opened it up, flattened it out, cut it, put a little arch in it so that it would fit in here and then I just kind of crimped this um, tube so that it just sits there, it splits it about in half and that just lets you put some paper underneath it and uh, allows you to put some sticks and stuff on top there. Inside the bucket, uh, this is a metal uh, five gallon bucket. They're a little bit tricky to find nowadays. You've got to find um, something some you know varnish or something like that that comes in a metal bucket um, so look around see if you can find one so inside the bucket you want to insulate the um, chimney part really well inside there so that this heat stays in the chimney and isn't leaking out into the support material here so um, inside the bucket is filled up with just ash wood stove ash um, i just went to my pile that i dumped my wood stove ash and just filled this whole thing up with ash around it kind of supported it filled it in and then um, I just mixed up a small container of uh, concrete and then just kind of concreted over the top so there's just a thin layer it keeps the ash in the wind would blow it or if it rained it would fill it up and it would kind of make a mess so I just put kind of a cap here of concrete over the top so this is all filled up with ash and that just insulates the tube keeps the heat in the tube and gives you a good uh, rise on that so that's my basic uh, principle on how it works. I also wanted to uh, add a top to it. So a lot of these rocket mass heaters, they have a top to them. So you kind of get two places of combustion on here. So I just grabbed another five gallon bucket. And put a hole in it and just cut it with some shears. It's not a very good hole at all. Um, but someday I'll fix it up a little bit better. But for now, it just has an opening there. All right, so I got it going here. Um, I just put some sticks in here, just some pieces of two by four. Uh, they're on the top half. The bottom half just stays empty for air draw through there. And um, it just comes out the chimney here. So like most people talk about, they burn fairly clean, especially after they get going, uh, get up to temperature. Uh, they're pretty clean. You'll see it shoot some ash and some smoke as it crackles and pops and things like that. Um, but once it gets up to temperature, you get some embers in there, um, it'll burn pretty clean without a lot of smoke. So it's just burning these um, two by four ends here that I split up into little pieces. Um, they're about this size and I just feed them in there. You do have to keep feeding it in there. So as they kind of burn down, you have to push them in a little bit. Um, to keep them fed in there. A vertical design obviously kind of gravity feeds itself, but on this horizontal, you have to just keep pushing pieces in as it starts to burn down a little bit to keep them inside where it's the hottest part of the chamber. So um, it's going pretty good now. You can hear the rocket sound. So the top here, it gets pretty hot, but you know, it's not super uh, torching hot, but it's pretty hot. Uh, in the summer, we like to use these to roast our marshmallows on, so when the kids want to roast marshmallows in the summer, uh, I just fire this thing up and it uh, fires up pretty quick. In a couple minutes, it gets going. They can roast marshmallows. You can just rest them right on the edge here um, and put a couple of marshmallow sticks on there. And it's nice and quick and it makes a great marshmallow. Um, it also is nice because of safety features that um, it's not blowing a lot of embers and things like that. Uh, we have a decent bit of wind and then when it gets dry in the summer if you you know have a fire pit or something like that you're getting embers blowing all over when the wind kicks up and um, this is just a nice way to go outside roast some marshmallows it's just not it's not a fire pit and a big fire but 
Um, you still get the crackling sound and you get some heat. You can put your hands on it. Um, people put their feet around the edges of it. Um, the, the bucket itself stays really cool because of the ash that's insulating it. Um, and even the concrete is pretty cool. You can touch this pretty easily. The chimney part does definitely get hot um, because of the heat of the fire heating that up. So um, if you did have little kids, obviously you'd want to keep them away from touching that. Um, but it's a pretty nice little fire s'more cooker that we have. So let me show you the top of this. So um, usually I don't put the top on until it really starts getting going. So with the top on now, um, the chimney part doesn't touch the top. There's still a gap um, up here that from the chimney to the top there. I didn't really do any calculations or measure it. I've seen uh, the calculations you know, kind of do to make that the most efficient, but I just eyeballed it. Uh, gave it an inch or two, and then it has this opening here. So when you put the uh, top on it, then it really cuts down on the ash blowing around because most of the ash is just going to fall to the top of that concrete uh, piece. The top of the can now gets pretty warm, so especially right in the middle as that heat comes up and concentrates right there, that'll get really warm. So we've put some pots and pans on there and tried to boil some water and things like that. Um, and it's definitely doable and it definitely gives you a kind of a good cook surface. Um, you definitely have to feed it some wood to keep it going inside there. Um, not it really required um, putting a top on it, but just kind of gives you a different idea if you wanted to cook on it or put a pot up there or a pan or something like that and heat water. Um, it will for sure do that. The size of the hole, you'd like the area of this hole to be bigger than um, this so that there's not a restriction here. Once again, I just kind of eyeballed mine. I didn't do any math to figure out there. It probably needs to be a little bit bigger. Um, but I just kind of put this together with two free cans and just saw what I could do. And um, it seems to work pretty well and kind of fun thing to play with. Um, I don't really use it for cooking or anything like that, but it is kind of a fun concept, project to build. So maybe you can steal some ideas from this.